Good morning, everybody. It's me, Chris. And today, uh, this Sunday morning, I'd like to cover some advanced tips and tricks on my uh, Ultra Micro Nitro Gwillows Flying Balsa Model Conversions, man. So I got Cox engines. That's what I use all the time. It's either the Pee Wee motor or the TD engine, okay? Uh, here's my tips and tricks, real sweet and short. Uh, regarding external tanks and air pressurization system. It's not that complicated as long as we all can find the original instructions and read them thoroughly. They really do help out a lot and clarify a lot of confusion as to how a, an external tank is supposed to be properly set up and this is what my successes have been so far. What I'm showing you works uh, for me every time. It, 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 uh, and is also recommended. I'm not doing anything new except uh, following what the manufacturer recommended both separately for the fuel tank, uh, engine mounting, and, and etc. and how to add those two together. Also in this video I'll do a quick recap of uh, the version 2.0 of my Aronka Champion. Uh, I redid it after last year's uh, prototype that I did just to see uh, what I could and couldn't get away with fitting uh, inside one of these things and uh, seeing how much it weighed after I did all that. All right, let's begin. <clears throat> and the basic uh, advanced tips and tricks are, okay, first of all, when in, uh, installing an external tank, uh, the manufacturer recommends to have the feed line that comes out of the, the fuel tank to face the rear of the aircraft towards the tail okay and this will let the center of gravity and the uh, uh, where the fuel will move towards the back of the tank help naturally flow and what we also want to do is mount this in such a way usually at an angle so that the gravity feed is naturally occurring from the tank here from the feed line going up to the venturi or carburetor whichever kind of engine you're using in, in your application and in this one in particular it's a Cox motor uh, <clears throat> now we have uh, the, f the fuel fill line and the overfill or vent lines here now will be doubled as extension vents uh, uh, Meaning as such, these could now be pointed in a, a different direction. Once it's mounted in, inside the tank, you, ha you can uh, have the option to get the, your tank positively pressurized. Uh, in doing so, what we would easily do and simply do is use the principle of air pressure. I mean, the uh, air pressure coming off the prop thrust going in that direction towards the tail. As the prop thrust goes over the body of the airplane, we can apply, use the positive pressure coming off of it and with the vent extension pointed towards the direction of the, the thrust, the source of the positive air flow, we can get positive air pressure induced into the tank for each tube. The more pressure you have, the richer the engine will run. The less pressure you have, the leaner it will run. That's tip, advanced tip number two. Uh, in other words, you can, you can fine tune these vent extensions, have them forward, neutral, straight sticking out towards the wing tips. And for some reason, for I, I don't know why, uh, maybe you control, I'm not into U control. But if you point it backwards, it will create a draft or a, a partial vacuum. Not a full vacuum, just a draft or a partial vacuum. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, lastly, the advanced tips and tricks that they don't tell you mostly. Please keep this fuel feed line. Act, act, uh, in the, the axis of that feed line as close uh, as you can to the, the crankshafts. Uh, center line axis okay for a uh, fuel efficiency again uh, keeping the tank at an angle if you need to making sure that the natural gravity feed flow of that tank 
allows fuel to freely flow to the carburetor or venturi. Okay, adding a tilt to it helps out. Okay, the positive vent tubes and extensions definitely help out, especially during flight. And good luck with that. Uh, put the vent extensions in after, of course. Uh, Right before you skin up your aircraft with wet, with whatever kind of covering you choose to use, be it tissue or ultra coat. Um, and I've got a question from an email from a friend, Monty the Cat. He says, "What firewall do do I choose to use? Are you like to, I like to use two different types of materials? Uh, it's the aircraft grade five ply." Birch or basswood plywood uh, uh, for an economical or money saving cost. You can use the arts and crafts plywood. Uh, my, the thickness for the sheets I use is 330 seconds, just like they call out in the Guillo's plans. Um, I paint mine up black. I drill a few holes for some magnets for the cowling. And the cowling is uh, also got a nice. Uh, piece of very very thin uh, hardwood on it again with the magnets so it's really quick nice and easy I've got some brass spacers uh, uh, flange brass spacers to stand uh, the motor off from the firewall uh, the reason I do this is to provide more airflow to the Venturi in the back of uh, the motor the, the air intake for the Venturi can be seen uh, right, whoops, bear with me. The Venturi air hole, as we all know, in the Pee motor is right back there. So I decided to put these spacers in so I could get some more air circulating into the Venturi for proper air to fuel mixture. Instead of having the motor sit flush against the firewall, it seemed to me. Even though it has a small channel running down to the bottom of, uh, end of the back plate, to the bottom of the back plate, uh, it still didn't seem like enough airflow t for me uh, for it to breathe properly or to get the proper air in the future. Just to be sure, I have that space. Now, it, it, it runs really great. It's easier to clean as well. It's also easier to remove uh, add or install. I do have blind nuts uh, installed on this so I can take the engine off on and off without worrying about the nuts in the back because they're permanently bitten into the back of the uh, plywood board. Uh, also tips, guys remember to adjust the uh, vector of your motor, I mean well the angle of the motor is slightly down uh, one or two degrees and slightly to the right as well using washers. I uh, installed a few washers uh, in between <clears throat> the uh, motor mount flanges and the brass spacers. Uh, for those guys that want to do the external tanks on peewee motors, be very careful drilling through the fuel drum, the uh, the fuel bowl, uh, rather. These fuel bowls are fine. Just drill a hole a little, a little slightly larger than your, your the fuel line that you're using, being careful not to uh, damage the uh, integrated Venturi tube that is that is part of uh, the, the reed valve system. Don't injure that, that that anything inside. Make sure everything still seals, okay? And keep that drill bit t uh, tip away from everything else inside that. Also, make sure you clean that fuel bowl thoroughly uh, and finish off your drilling edge hole finely uh, and wash it clean, wash it clean, wash it clean. Don't get any aluminum grit inside that Cox Peewee motor, you'll ruin it. I'm, I'm telling you. These uh, engines don't like getting anything inside of them. Anyways, this one's good to go. Uh, other than that, it's a very nice uh, design. 
Uh, newer things that I've uh, upgraded on this versus the original one, of course, is all linear servos, make it much lighter. Uh, it makes the aircraft a million times lighter. The two types of Monty's uh, question was what type of firewall is you, I use carbon fiber, which was used on the prototype, or the five pub ply balsa. So going over that, please don't use plastic. Okay, it could be uh, the nitro fuel has been known to craze certain types of plastic and even over time uh, so, uh, wear out nylon and, and vinyl and stuff like that although those are durable materials they do are wasted over time just like fuel tubing and all the other stuff they don't last forever so please use wood or carbon fiber do not use balsa wood either do not use plastic or balsa wood balsa wood is too soft it will get waterlogged Right away will not hold the motor. So please don't use that All right, so that's about it in a nutshell uh, for breaking in motors or Any other tips and tricks? Uh, that you have questions for Feel free to email me. You'll find my email at the uh, my info on the home page here on the YouTube channel and you guys enjoy the rest of this Sunday and as always stay tuned for more take care goodbye